Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to try and repair these two tablets here. The first one is this Amazon tablet and the second one is an Apple iPad. I'm going to show you the model numbers in a minute. Now these were not bought from eBay, these were given to me by one of my best friends that I met at university, his name's Jared, and last time I went out for a couple of catch-up drinks with him, he asked me did I want to take a look at a couple of tablets that are no longer working. These have been out of service now for a long time, they've been replaced probably whenever it was let's call it a year or more ago uh, and of course i thought well this is going to be perfect because these are real faults nobody has tampered with this before it might be hard it might be a nightmare but 100 percent, i am the first person that's looked at these so that's uh, that's fantastic because i always prefer that because it's more like real life more like you guys at home fixing something yourself because most of you won't be buying things to fix you just want to repair things yourself around the home now i went around to jared's house when he moved into his latest property probably around must be about four years ago now or something and uh, he's got two boys Harry and Ben and I was wiring up the data sockets you know the network sockets because he run cable everywhere and I was just terminating all the uh, sockets and his oldest boy Harry was he really interested in all the wires and everything and he was helping me out since then he has actually been watching my videos and this is so good because for example, my son now is not really too bothered when it comes to cables and stuff like that. But Harry loves them and he's always trying to connect things up to his TV, pulling out cables from the back and experimenting. And I think that's really important. So uh, if you're watching Harry and Ben, big thumbs up to you. Well done. Keep up the good work. Keep on viewing my videos. So now when it comes to these, what I've done is because they've been unplugged and probably the battery's completely drained for so long, I've... I'm just going to leave them plugged in. They've already been in for maybe about 15 minutes. I'm going to keep charging them up just to see what anything happens. Now with this one here, I did actually recognise this. And if you look really closely at the bottom, you can see that there's a model number. So let me just zoom in and show you that. Right, so you can see there, SX034QT. And this tablet looked very similar to something I did before. So I got the old one out, the one I couldn't fix, and look, it's the same model number. So that is a real bonus because hopefully now I'll have a better chance of being able to take this apart without breaking it because this was the one that when I tried to take apart, I used a little sucker thing. And as soon as I went like that, tiny bit of pressure, crack, a crack occurred on the screen. I couldn't get this to work. I partially got it working, but I couldn't get it to work. But hopefully now I might have a better idea of uh, how to get into this one. I might end up cracking the screen again, but I'll have more chance of uh, not cracking it. Now this one here is, let me zoom into this one, is a model A1489. So I googled that because I'm not really up there with different iPads and stuff like that. And it is basically an iPad Mini 2 Wi-Fi. So don't know the age of it, but it would be nice to get these working again so Harry and Ben have extra tablets, you know, because not everybody has loads of tablets lying around the place and it's always handy. Or, you never know, on the Amazon one it might be handy for doing emulation or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I will do my best to fix it. If I fix it, fantastic. If I don't, Jared's completely aware that there's a good chance I'm going to break it. It's probably not worth sending these off to a professional or a repair shop because uh, the, the labour costs and stuff, I don't really know how much these are worth now. But uh, if, if I can fix them, then obviously that's going to be a bonus. Now I will say, uh, please don't ask me to fix your stuff. I'm doing this just because it's my friend. I don't do this as a service. The reason being is because most of the time I ruin it. And I don't want to be ruining things for other people when they could be repairable. And I know a lot of people say, yeah, I understand if you ruin it, but it's still pressure on me. I really understand that Jared doesn't mind if these get broken. I truly believe that. Other times people say I don't mind, but really they do mind, and that's extra pressure for me that I don't need because it's already hard enough trying to fix it. So, uh, yeah, let's start with... Uh, well, let's see what happens now if I turn this one on because it's been plugged in for a while. So I'm just going to tap it down. When I first of all turned it on, it came up with uh, a battery with... Uh, there you go. It came with a with, uh, thingy through it, a uh, lightning bolt, and now it's just got that. So maybe if I was to leave this plugged in for ages, it would start to work. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the power button for around 30 seconds just to see if that will do anything. Okay, so it made a noise there. I'm just going to keep holding it down just in case it needs some sort of hard reset. I'll fast forward through this bit. All 
Right, okay, that's definitely not doing anything, but it is flashing up with that. Now, there was, uh, from memory, I had to press, I think it was up or down and on to put it into kind of like the reset mode. So I'm just going to try that. I'm just going to try this button first on the right and on. If that doesn't work, I'll do this one. Okay, so that didn't do anything. Let me put the button on the left-hand side. When I was fixing the other one, I knew all this off by heart, but I've, I've forgotten now because it's been quite a few months ago. Right, again, it's not doing anything. My initial impressions here are it could be battery related or it could be port related because this port does feel a little bit loose. So, you know, often if people are using it and it's plugged in, it's easy to knock the port around. So I'm wondering if it's a bad connection up there because it doesn't really seem to be uh, seem to be very great. Now, with this one here, I need to Google what this means. Let me just try to turn it on. Holding down the power button again. Anything. I'm just going to hold down the home button and the power button. Oh, here we go. Hold on. See what it does now. No? Okay, so it's still coming up with that. Let me hold down the home button and the power button, see if that does anything. So I'm wondering if this means that it's kind of uh, lost this software or something. I'm going to Google it because there's no point in me struggling for ages if I can get a simple answer on Google. Right, well, okay, so it's just the same again. The Apple logo's come up. Let's just see if it comes up with that cable and the iTunes thing. Yeah, okay, so there's definitely some sort of uh, some sort of issue there. Well, I'm going to Google that, and then uh, I think maybe we'll start on the Amazon, see what's happening there. Or, do you know what? Let's just do a mixture. I might end up doing both at the same time. So while I'm waiting for this to charge, I might mess around with this. What I'm thinking is maybe I, I could get the battery out, and maybe I could put a charge into it using my little charge board, the TP, whatever it was called, 4056. I can't remember the name of it. But maybe that might be a way to get charge back in. Now, when I did this one here, I didn't think to change the battery, but a lot of people ended up saying it could be the battery. Since then, I've been practicing messing around with the uh, chips and stuff on here, so I can't fix this now. But annoyingly, if this battery is faulty, then it probably won't work by replacing this battery in here, because I think this battery was probably the main fault that was on this water damage one here as well. Right, let me check this one out. Okay, so I've downloaded iTunes on this old laptop here and I've had a look online and yeah, basically it needs a restore. So it's something to do with like an error with the software, which is what I thought. So uh, yeah, let's unplug it from the charger and now let's plug this into the actual laptop itself and let's see if we can get this uh, restored. My worry is like why, you know, why has it gone faulty? But saying that, maybe it uh, was unplugged or something during a... Look at that, it just keeps flashing the apple now. That's interesting. Uh, maybe it was unplugged during an update or something like that. So this is what happens when I try to restore it. I hold down the power button and the home button here for 10 seconds. I then release my finger off here, keep my finger on here for about another 15 seconds. The computer does then recognize it and it comes up with you know the option to restore your iPad. I let it do everything, the bar goes all the way across and then when it tries to turn back on again it does this just on and off and eventually it will come up with here. The iPad could not be restored, an unknown error occurred so 100% it's not just a case of you know bad software or something like that. I really thought it might be but it's not. So we're gonna have to take this apart now and let's open it up and see, maybe it could be battery related, maybe it will become obvious when I open it up, I really don't know. In fact, before opening it up, what I should do is clean the contacts here with IPA, just on the off chance that there's one or two of them that's not making a good contact, and then we'll take it apart. Well, I've had a look with my eye loop, and unfortunately the ports look perfect. If they were all covered with tarnish and stuff, then I would say that that maybe could affect it, but looking through the eye loop, it looks absolutely fine. But just for the sake of doing it, because it's only going to be a, a one minute job, I am going to get some IPA and I'm just going to put it in the ports and use this little brush here just to uh, move it around, just in case. But I'm near enough 99.999% certain this will not make any difference whatsoever. But saying that, it's not going to do any harm either.
Right now, if they were dirty, I would then put some deoxy in there just to make the contacts better. But they're absolutely perfect, so there's no point in wasting. There's no point in wasting it even a drop because it's not going to make any difference. Right, so just to plug it in again. Push this in and out a few times. You can see exactly the same thing's happening on this one, so that hasn't made any difference whatsoever. And with this one. Now you can see that battery symbol again. Well, I think what I'm going to do to start with is I did have a quick look online. So right now, not even that tiny little battery is coming up. It's just the, the, the zigzag lightning thing. So I've got a feeling that the battery is completely gone on this. Now, I did look online. This looks really hard to take off. You've got to heat all the way around the edge here. And it's a case of prying it. And there's a good chance of smashing the digitizer. There's a good gen the LCD itself is glued down. This is going to be really, really hard to take apart. So I'm going to start with this because... I'd rather get stuck into this first and then I can look into this one afterwards. So immediately what I'm thinking is possible battery problem. So let's get this thing apart. Okay, wish me luck. I've got this little thing here which looks like a guitar plectrum but it's thicker. And I've just got to work my way around the board and not make the mistake beforehand of uh, lifting the screen up. Basically I want to get the cover off the back rather than pulling the screen forward. So I'm going to be working my way round and uh, just trying to trying to ease it up. You can see that there's like a plastic bit of the side here. So I want to get the plastic. This look, I can show you better on this. This is the one that I've taken off off the other one. Can you see that there's these little plastic things that dig in here, here? So you've got to lift each of them out. And if you keep working your way round, it should then pop out. Here we go. Excellent, I did it really easily. It just shows you because I've done it once before, it was much easier that time. Right, okay, there's, uh, that all looks fine, doesn't it? No sign of water damage or anything like that. I wonder what that's for, looks a little bit off center. I wonder what that does. It doesn't seem to be seem to be on anything. I'm not too sure. Right. Okay. So we've got the battery here. So what we could do is we've got the charge port here. So if I was to plug in the charge port, I should be able to measure on these pins if five volts coming into it. So let's zoom right in. Plug it in the micro USB. I'll show you the meter in a minute. I'm just going to go between there and this pin and it is uh, for 4.6 volts. I presume that's correct. If I was to go to continuity, I think that this one is, yeah, there we go, there. So if I was to go between this pin and this pin on DC voltage, it's reading 4.6 volts. I'm not sure if it should be five or not, but it uh, seems high enough. So now let me zoom out and show you that. So between there and here, you can see 4.6. And now let's disconnect the battery and see what the battery is reading. This voltage here is a lithium, so it should be 3.7 volts. So let's uh, go between the red and the black. Right, it's reading 3.3, so it's low. Let's go between the other red and the black. Yeah, 3.3, and I'm just going to do a combination of both of them. Right, so that says to me that that battery is discharged, but not completely discharged. You think it would have been enough to charge up. Let's have a look at this battery here. I don't know if I measured this one last time. This is from my faulty one. Three point seven. There we go. So it's more, isn't it? So if I was to put my battery in here, that'd be interesting. To see if it's enough to to uh, charge it up. Uh, don't know how easy these batteries are to take out though. Can't remember if I did that before or not. Right, it was much easier for me just to pull it off and I'm pretty sure I did pull it off before when I was messing around with it. So now let's connect this up. All right, now I'm not saying this battery is good but it's definitely got more voltage than the last one. So let's see what happens now. 
to turn it on. Uh, which one is on? This one over here. See what happens. Excellent, Amazon. Okay, well, it hasn't done that before. Let's see what else will happen. Let's turn these lights off so you can see it better. There we go, good old Peppa Pig. Fantastic. Right, uh, 41%. Okay, it's got a, a pin on it, I don't know that. Let's just try that. Wrong pin. Right, no, I'm gonna have to uh, ring my mate before I lock it, but look, that appears to be working. So now, let's, uh, let's turn it off again. I wanna see if I can revive that battery, or at least find out maybe, I mean, this, I don't think, this is quite a current model, so I don't think the battery would have died completely. Maybe it was just let go. Maybe it was just uh, let go so low or something, I don't know. Because uh, I know with lithium, once they drop below a certain amount, they don't charge because they think it's not safe. But you can actually put charge into it, and if you get over that amount, then it will start to charge again using the tablet, if you can get over that, that initial uh, sort of safety safety thing. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's turn this off, that's uh, really good news. Because, I mean, I've got a battery here, but you can also buy batteries from eBay. For, uh, for cheap. In fact, what I should do is before I do that, before I do that, let's plug this in to see if it looks like it's gonna charge. Yeah, look, can you see the charging symbol up here? Right, now I'm just gonna unplug it. Yeah. Excellent, so initial things look like it's just a battery problem. I'm really happy about that. Right, okay, so this is the little thing I'm gonna to use to charge, to try and charge it up. See, TP4056, and I've just got, a, this is just a USB charger going into here, so there's five volts going in, and we've got a negative and positive. I should have color coded the wires, but I didn't. Now what I've done is I've pinched the ends of this to get it to fit into a Nintendo Switch, and it looks like it's gonna fit into this as well. So we're gonna put the uh, negative to the black, and a positive to the red. Now these will fall out if they're kind of wiggled, but hopefully they will just stay in their place. Right, so that's that, and now let's see, can you see it's gone to red? I don't know, I didn't show you before, but it was on green before, because it wasn't connected, now it's gone to red. So that actually says it is charging. So let's go onto here and see what voltage is going into it, and see if it's rising. Right, that might actually be the pin number coming through, because I did text my friends. Right, so there you go, 3.688. Now let's keep it on there. It's already gone up to eight, nine. Let's see if it will get, I oh know, no, it's going down, hold on. 3.690, let's see if it will rise from that. Oh, there you go, you can see it's climbed up to 3.7, so it is climbing. Now I think with lithium, they can go all the way up to, is it 4.2, something, something like that. So even though this is a 3.7 battery, I think when they're fully charged, they're about 4.1 or 4.2. So I'm gonna leave that. Obviously, I'm gonna keep my eye on it. I'm gonna leave that for a while and uh, see what happens. Let's be back to this in a little while. Well, it's only been about 10 minutes, and look, it's already up to 3.9. So I'm gonna leave it another 10 minutes or so and see if we can get to 4, 4.1. I might even then just plug it back in, put the charger in, and then see if it starts properly charging like it would normally do. Well, I just thought that maybe it's probably not the best to put this on straight onto the battery because this does get a little bit warm. So I've just put it on now, this plastic cover. Well, about 15 minutes have passed. Let's uh, see what it's measuring now. Right, 3.95, so it's definitely more than it was, but it's not exactly, uh, it doesn't seem to have risen much in the last little bit. I can definitely feel the plugs warm though, so it has been, it definitely has been putting a charge in here. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's warm as well. Well, let's measure this battery now and let's see what it's measuring just you know, purely with the battery. Let's see if it still is. It was, what was it, 3.3 before? 3.7, excellent, right. Let's pop that back in. You know, I'm really hopeful now that that might be enough. Also, I've, uh, I know the pin number. Right, so that's there. Let's turn this on. Actually, I need to hold that down a bit. 
Here we go, Amazon, excellent. Look, and that's with the battery that's in there. This is the, uh, you know, the battery that I tried. Well, I'll let that boot up and see what's happening. Brilliant, look at that, Lion King this time. Right, I'm just gonna put in the uh, pin number off camera. Check it out. Here it is. Let's turn off these lights. Excellent, right, let's see if we've got any volume on this. Right, have a listen to that. That's Minecraft, so the sound's definitely working. Right, so now let's plug it in and let's see if it is actually accepting a charge. It's weird because my friend would have definitely left this on charge and I left it on charge for an hour earlier and it wasn't doing anything. So now let's uh, plug this, where are we, plug this one in. You'd think it would have sort of trickle charged itself a little bit. Unless of course if it was left in for maybe 24 hours then it would. Right, this is definitely, definitely charging. And remember this is the faulty battery. So that thing has saved me so many times and it was only, I think, about two UK pounds. So it's well worth it because then with this it means that you can get charge into a lot of batteries when the device won't charge them because the battery's fallen I presume below the, the, safety, uh, the safe level. So what I'm going to do now is let it charge up, I'm going to put the back cover back on and I'm going to give it a clean up and then uh, yeah, start looking at the iPad but really happy with that. It just turns out that the battery was drained too much for whatever reason. I don't know how that would happen but you can see now a working tablet and uh, I don't want to go through it too much because it's not my stuff but it appears to be working okay. So let me clean this up. So there we have it, a nice and clean. It's in very good condition actually. And uh, it's charging up, we're at 25%, so I'm gonna put this to one side now, let it charge up. So uh, yeah, how good was that? So Harry, if you are watching this, dodgy battery. That's all it was, it just needed to have a bit of a boost to get it above the safe charging level. And now, this will charge it hopefully from 25% all the way to 100%, but beforehand the tablet couldn't charge it because the battery was too drained. Maybe if it was left plugged in for days, I don't know. Possibly then, bit by bit, the trickle charge might have got it up to the safe level where it could start charging. But uh, who knows, when I had it in for an hour earlier, it didn't make any difference whatsoever. So now I'm gonna put this to one side and I'm gonna start working on this Apple here. Now, when uh, my friend texted me about the pin number, he told me that, that this went off to a phone repair shop. So basically, I remember him telling me this on the night out, but it slipped my mind earlier. Basically, this one here was sent, uh, sent away to, was given to a phone repair shop who sent it away for repair. It came back, they said that they couldn't find what's wrong with it, they think it's the motherboard, and they didn't charge him. So it wasn't any worse off, but it's still not working. So basically, this has been looked at. Now, that's good for me because in this instance now, I'm not scared to take it apart. Because if I take it apart and completely break it, at least it's already been looked at by a professional and they deemed it not repairable. So what's the odds of me fixing it? So now the risk is off. If I take it apart and break it completely, at least I know it's not something really simple on the inside if somebody that does it for a living uh, didn't uh, didn't repair it. So uh, yeah, I now need to heat around here and start prying it off. Chances are I probably will cause damage because it does look hard to do. I'm just gonna be fast forwarding through it all because if you wanna know how to do it, you might as well watch a professional on YouTube uh, who actually knows what they're doing. Obviously, if I make any mistakes, crack the screen, I will then show you that part of the video. So uh, let's get this open and see if we can find anything that maybe they might have missed, I might be able to find, you never know. Okay, that came off particularly easy. So, uh, yeah, obviously it definitely has been definitely has been looked at before. Right, so there's a little ribbon cable down here, so I've got to be careful of that. Uh, yeah, and I can see that there's screws missing here and here. A uh, little bit of a shame uh, that things are that things are missing from it, 
but I suppose when the repair shop put it back together they probably thought that it's kind of junk now. I mean hopefully it's all hopefully it's all intact. So let's undo that screw and this screw here. Yeah, and this should be stuck down as well, and it's not uh, It's not anymore. Right, so let's gently put that there. Oh, hold on a minute. The battery is disconnected. That battery is not connected. Well, okay, I know it's not connected for a reason, but as far as I'm concerned, when I've done my testing today, it's, uh, you know, every time I unplug the power, the, uh, the battery was... Uh, it wasn't working and that's because it's disconnected here. So, let's just see if there's any voltage in this battery. I'm not sure if it's the top ones or bottom ones, let's have a look. There you go, 4.1 volts. And what should this be? 3.75. In fact, the battery is massive, look at the size of it. Okay, well you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put it straight back on. I'm wondering if it is a software issue because remember, it wasn't connecting when I put it onto the... Com well, actually, you won't remember because I uh, edited out most of that part. First of all, when I connected to the laptop, it wasn't being recognised. It was only when I held down the power button and the uh, home button for 10 seconds and then let go of the power button and held this one, the home button, for another 15 seconds. Only then did it get recognised and it said setting up as a DFU, which means uh, device firmware update or something like that, I think. Right, let's plug that in. And let's now see, we don't have to put it all back together. There you go, look, that's on now. See, I'm sure there should be a, a little cover over here to keep all these, all these in. In fact, see, I don't know how much this has been messed around because I haven't got, I haven't got all, I, I've never taken them apart and I haven't got another one to compare to. But 100%, there's screw holes here and there's nothing on it. The screws are missing from here. So uh, it, it wasn't put back together properly. But saying that, I'm not sticking up for the repair shop, but it must be awful disappointing when you've gone to the bother to take something apart and then you can't actually fix it because all that time's been wasted. Right, now let's turn this on and let's see if we've got anything. Right, Apple logo. Let's see what happens now. Got my hopes up, but it's, it's going to do the same thing. Right now, I'm going to connect it to the laptop and I'm going to go through the same process as before and see now if it will work because the battery's plugged in. Right, okay, so I'm back on the iTunes now. Now let's see if it's going to be recognised when I do this. Plug that in. I mean, before it was just flashing on and off. Okay, so it's coming up with that, but now hopefully it will be recognised up here, which it is. Well, I'm going to go to update and see if that does it. If not, I'll then do restore. To update your iPad, hold on. If your iPad can't be updated, you'll need to restore it to its factory settings. iTunes will update your iPad to iOS 12.4.3 and will verify the update with Apple. I presume that's okay. Thing is, with me messing around with it earlier, I've probably wiped the iPad now anyway. So if there was, for example, pictures on it and stuff, then uh, they're probably going to be gone. Right, so it's extracting software from the top. So I'll let it do its thing and then uh, see, what, uh, see what happens, see if it goes through this time. I'm thinking though, obviously the battery wasn't disconnected originally. The thing's been taken apart 100%. You can see there's missing screws and stuff like that. So they would have spotted, if they knew how to take it apart, they would have spotted that the battery was disconnected, if it's possible for it dis to disconnect from a drop or something. So obviously they've done the disconnecting, in which case I'm pretty sure that they would have done all this already. So although I kind of have got my hopes up because something's different than before, i.e. the battery is disconnected, I'm still not overly hopeful because I'm pretty sure that this would have been done already. But still, I've got to go through the steps, haven't I? Right, annoyingly, bad news here with the update. It said it could not be updated. An unknown error occurred. So now I'm going to go for the restore and see if that makes any difference or not. Right, that's gone through, now it says waiting for iPad, so let's see if uh, the iPad's going to start turning on and stuff. All 
Right, Apple logos come on. This is where it just went on and off before. Right, it's come up with serial number NA again. Waiting for iPad. Oh, it went to a red screen there for a split second. Or red or brown screen. Nope. Ah, oh, what a shame. So it looks like it was close. It's weird that it comes up with serial number NA. Uh, right, so obviously this is what they've done before and they've just left the battery disconnected because it couldn't be fixed anyway, possibly for uh, for safety. Uh, okay, well, I'll get, the, I'll get the main board out and have a look at it, but I think it's going to be unlikely. What I can do is I can take that number there, that 4013, scribble it down, and again, I can check on Google. It might point me in some kind of direction of what it could be. Right, so I googled error code 4013 and it's not just for the iPad mini, it's also for the iPhones, I think it's across the whole range. And it's a non-specific thing, it can mean different things. So some people are saying it's to do with the USB, which would be fantastic if it was a USB problem. So I can, for example, trace it from here to where it goes up to the board under here somewhere, and I might physically be able to get continuity from each of the pins to the Lego connector or however it's connected to the board on the other side of this. I don't know yet because I haven't taken it apart. But more people are saying it's a NAN problem, and when I look on the uh, YouTube, basically people are taking off the, the NANs and then they're basically uh, getting all the solder balls away from it. It's a BGA, so there's those are solder balls underneath, but to be fair they look quite big ones and then they're reapplying them and putting them back on or they're, I think, programming their own one. They have this kind of box of tricks that they put it in and think they program their own or something. I don't really know, I haven't spent a huge amount of time on it. Basically, the bottom line is I'm pretty much certain it's not going to be repairable for me. I haven't got another board to swap parts about with. I'm not going to buy one. I've had a look. They're currently on a for sale in CEX in the UK for £120, I think they are, and £130. So they're not cheap. Obviously, if I could buy one for £30 or £40, I might well do it for the purpose of the video. I'm not going to spend £120 and ruin a working one to try and fix a faulty one. But what a lot of people said is that remove the microphone and then try to update it or remove the screen and try to update it or remove this or remove that or remove the front camera. Apples can be fussy. So basically I did all that. You can see that everything has been removed. I've just got the board now. All of this has been removed. Front camera, headphone jack up here, this rear facing camera or whatever it's... Uh, Everything's been everything's been done all down here as well and obviously the screen and the digitizer and it's still coming up with the same error and this is reminding me of my Android phone and everybody said the Android one was a software issue but I'm almost certain it wasn't because with mine it happened as soon as I dropped it it went faulty to me that's too much of a coincidence I think that possibly this might have been dropped and maybe there's a solder ball under the NAND which has basically uh, uh, come away so it's kind of broken like this. Either that or the NAND itself might be faulty. I mean, maybe it's not, I could be lucky, it could be the USB. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the board now and just start looking at the capacitors, doing a few measurements and stuff like that. And uh, you never know, I might get lucky, but I think it's unlikely. But really, I haven't got anything to lose because you can see that it's already been checked over probably pretty thoroughly already. Right, I've got the uh, motherboard out now so I can have a nice close look. It looks like the USB cable, is that soldered to the board? I would have thought that would have been replaceable. Let's have a look here. Oh yeah, it is, look there. Well, that's a bit annoying because on the iPhones that I've dealt with, which is only one, <laughs> the iPhone 6S I think it was, uh, the USB, I'm sure, was a modular thing, meaning you could unplug it and plug it in. So that's a bit, uh, yeah, that's a bit annoying. But at least it means that I can, I can test the pins between here and here for continuity. And then if the pins are okay, I know it's unlikely to be the USB. If the pins are faulty, well, that would be that would be good. That would be good for me because I wouldn't have to get involved in trying to take the shield off and checking out the NAND chip and stuff. I'm going to check out the USB to begin with.
Okay, so as far as the USB is concerned, there's definitely continuity between each of the pins and certain pads on here. Now, maybe it's not going to the correct pads, or it might not be going to, for example, two or three pads. I don't know that because I haven't got the pin out for it. But there's definitely continuity between each of the pins and at least one of the pads on here. So that says to me that the chances are that it's probably going to be okay. So now I think what I'm going to do is try to take off this shield around here. Okay, so I've just popped that off there. It wasn't soldered on, it was just clipped on. And you can see the A7 chip here. Now I think that that might be the NAND, this one here. But this is just pure guesswork. You know, I really haven't got a clue how to test. I mean, there will be schematics available. The problem I've got is it's, it's reading them. I don't know where to start and it's gonna be very hard. I'm wondering what I need to double check online because I was a lot of the videos I were watching were from things like the iPhones and stuff. I need to check what that is there as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my multimeter. I'm just going to check a few capacitors and stuff and see if I can uh, see anything obvious. Okay, so next day now I've been doing plenty of research online. So basically this one here I believe is the Wi-Fi chip. And then this one that I said was the NAND is actually the NAND. And I've been watching videos on how to replace that. Now I uh, did check various different capacitors around the place and they're all just shorting on one side. I haven't checked them for voltage or anything like that. I'll purely be just checking for shorts just in case it was like a, an obvious capacitor issue. But uh, I can't find anything wrong with them. When I go to ground, on the capacitors, one side of them goes to ground, the other side doesn't. So I know it's just a simple test, but I think the capacitors probably are okay. So now with this one here, if it was just a case of taking it off and try to reball it and put it back on, I probably would give it a go. But most YouTube uh, videos on it, they put it into this special machine. I think it's called a Navi Pro something or other. It's from China. And basically that does something to it. It kind of reprograms it and then it will work again. So if, for example, there was just a bad solder ball on here, then yes, by reflowing it or taking it off, putting new balls on and putting it back on, it could start working. But if it's something to do with a bad sector in here or somehow the software's got corrupted, that's not gonna make a blind bit of difference if it's a software issue with this thing here. And I haven't got that box of tricks and I'm not gonna spend 300 pounds from China to get one of these box of tricks when I don't know how to use it. And also, I don't do this for a living. So, uh, well, iPhone, you know, iPhone stuff. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do is, I've been looking up about this uh, 4013 error. And most things are saying it's the NANDs. A few things are saying it could be the TriStar chip, which is this tiny little chip down here. Now again, that is a BGA chip and there's loads of balls underneath that one, so I'm not saying I will be able to do it, but I have messed around with that chip before when I was trying to fix an old uh, iPhone 5, 5S I think it was. So I have actually got one of these chips on the motherboard from the, from the 5S, it's so either this one here or this one here. Now the chip is, it's uh, TriStar, it's down as a 1610A2 on this. On one of my boards I've got a 1610A1, but I have got a 1610A3, and apparently the A3 is compatible with the A2, so I can fit a 1610A3 on here. Now, I don't know if the one on here is working properly because these boards had problems with them, but I think it is worth a go. So I'm going to do the TriStar, see if that makes a difference. Now when it comes to the NAND chip, I don't think I'm going to bother with it. I'll tell you why. It's got all uh, underfill. So basically there's like underfill all the way around it. You can see there's very little room around it. And I've got a feeling that this thing doesn't really look like it's got da damage, uh, drop damage on it. Also, I tried to reboot it many times, holding this down as hard as I could to see then if it would work. And even when I held this down as hard as I could, it still didn't work. Now I'm thinking, if there was a bad ball on here, by holding it down, just like the clamps did with the PlayStation 3, and just like I did with the old PSP Go by putting pressure on it, 
it would then work. So I'm thinking that it's not that, I'm thinking it's more corrupted software. So there's no point, or you know, something faulty with the NAND chip itself. So I'm gonna do the TriStar just because, for the sake of the video really, I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm gonna do that just because it is doable. Uh, and if that doesn't work, unfortunately, I'm not gonna take it any further. I mean, if it's scrap anyway, then I am slightly tempted just to take this off, but I'm kind of going to ruin it completely, and this could be revisited in the future, you know, when uh, when more knowledge is gained further down the line. But let's do this. Let's do this chip to begin with. Now, what I did is I did put my little meter into it here because the TriStar. One of the things with that is when it doesn't charge properly. Now, the problem is I don't know if this is charging properly or not because. It's, uh, the battery f looks to be f uh, full. So obviously if the battery's full, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be charging. But if you look, there definitely is something some of the times, but then it goes down to zero amps. So if I plug it in here, you will see, is it gonna go up? Sometimes that goes all the way up to one amp. But I have been plugging this in, it's been charging. So, but looking at that there, you would think it maybe is the TriStar, but if the, if the device was completely charged up, maybe it's not gonna draw anything if it's at 100%. So I'm plug it and plug it in again. It's strange, because yesterday that did go right the way up when I was testing this last night. I'm just gonna leave that plugged in for a couple of minutes and fast forward through it just to see if it, if it uh, goes higher at all. It's been about a minute and nothing's changed on here, but you have to take my word for it that yesterday that was going all the way up to one amp, but it never went higher than that. And I'm thinking maybe with an iPad that when I plug in my iPad, it goes all the way up to two amps. But saying that, as far as I know, this battery is fully charged. So I'll tell you what, let's take off this chip and see what happens with it. So let's take it off here first of all. Right, so let's zoom right in. Well, to begin with, let's just put a bit of flux on it. This is loads of flux on that. Now let's zoom right in. Right, so I've got my temperature at 480 degrees Celsius. I've got my airflow five out of eight. Remember, I'm using a very cheap station, so it might not actually be 480 degrees at the, uh, at the tip here. But uh, let's try to get this chip off. Actually, I'm gonna put it this way around because I have to be able to grab it. Right, okay, that came off. Now, I'm not gonna clean the pads and stuff. I'm just gonna leave them as they are. Don't think I caused damage there. So now I'm gonna take off the other chip and uh, put it on. Okay, so this is the donor board and this is the A3 one. So I think this is often called a U2 chip because I think that's what it was called originally on one of the first, uh, whatever it was, Apple products. But I think the proper name is a TriStar. Right, let's pop this one off. I'm gonna use the same temperature and stuff as before. There you go, that came off nice. Right, because I think the balls look okay, I mean really I should be cleaning up the paste on here. But remember, this is not a new chip with full balls. There's gonna be half the balls on here and half the balls on the old one. Now I'm not gonna be able to reball it. I mean, I did buy some cheap stuff from China, but I don't think they'll, uh, I didn't buy any stencils or anything for any of the Apple products. Look, let's just pop it on and see what happens, you know, the, uh, I've sort of already made up my mind that this isn't going to be a working device. Well, 
So if it was a new chip, then what I would do is I would take the, I would get some solder braid and uh, I would take off the old solder from here. So it's just the pads and then the balls from the chip would melt onto here. Now I've got to put this on the correct way, which is the dot going up into this corner up here. So the dot needs to be up here. You can see I've cleaned the chip with a little bit of IPA so I can see what's going on. Right, I'm just going to get it in the rough sort of place. But I can't really see because there's so much flux on there. Let's get some heat on that now and let's see if it will pull into place. Same temperature as before. Right, I'm completely out there, my whole ball across. Right, okay, that I think jumped into place. Now I'm not overly happy with this because I've done too much messing around with it. I've probably spread the solder balls underneath. But we'll see. I'll give it a clean up with IPA and see what it looks like. I'm just gonna let it cool for a little while. So ideally, I think with the BGA, you're not supposed to mess around with them because by me pulling and prodding it there, uh, the chances are the balls underneath could have stuck to each other. The eye loop, and I think that that looks, I think it looks okay. I haven't knocked any of the capacitors or the resistors around it. Uh, let's have a look here. Tiny little bit of solder there, but that looks too, that was too small to be an actual ball. Uh, do you know what, I think it, I think it went on okay. I think it is in the, I think it is in the right place. Well, let's uh, just put it back in the case and put the USB thing on it just to see if it's gonna draw any charge now. It's just down as uh, 0.14. Well, I'm gonna connect this up to the computer again. And let's just see if it's any different than before. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna film it. I'll just come back with the uh, with the answer. Guess what? It doesn't work. It is completely dead. It's not doing anything whatsoever. And now when I plug it into here, it's not even registering a. Uh, it's not registering a charge at all. So uh, yeah, what I did is I took it off again. I tried it again. It didn't make any difference. And then I actually put back the original. TriStar chip and it's still not making any difference. It's now completely and utterly dead. When I plug it into the computer, it's not being recognized, it's not coming up on iTunes. When I plug it into here, it's not coming up. And also when I turn it on here, it's not uh, it's not coming on either. And if I hold down the home button and that it's not coming on. So obviously I've completely ruined that little TriStar chip. Uh, so I'm giving up on that. Do you know what? I wasn't hopeful about it anyway. I honestly, well, not honestly, I don't know, do I? I'm thinking it was a NAND, uh, a NAND problem. But if you know otherwise, then put it down in the uh, in the comments. But the 4013 online all seem to point towards it being a, a NAND issue. But good news is, let's end on a positive. This tablet here last night went all the way to 100%. I've left it on all morning today, and if you have a look, can you see there, charging 0.9 amps, and if you look closely here, you can see it's 95 or 96%. So that is performing absolutely fine, and even without it being plugged into the thing, it still keeps a normal charge. So I, I do really believe that the tablet is working. So one out of two isn't bad. It's better than just being thrown in the drawer. And with this one, apart from the time spent, there was no actual money spent on this because I just managed to revive the battery using this little charging board here. But for me, overall, quite enjoyable. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, Jared and his sons 
Harry and Ben will be happy, at least now they have uh, an Amazon tablet to mess around with, so that's, uh, that's good. And also on Minecraft and stuff, it looks like there's a load of worlds and stuff on there. So hopefully they will uh, be able to do a bit of Minecraft on it and we'll be happy with that. So, uh, Jared, thanks so much for sending them out to me. And for everybody watching, thanks so much for watching. If you got any enjoyment, please give it a thumbs up. Apologies that I couldn't get this one working. Uh, if you like these videos, please think about subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye now.